Shalom Aleichem, everybody. It is about uh, 24 hours before Chag HaShkulis, and I wanted to share with you a thought about Kabbalah Satora. It's a very, very well-known Gemara Masech Shabbos that when Bnei Yisrael was standing by Har Sinai, so Hashem kofa leim har kigigis, Hashem took the mountain, turned it over, and basically gave Chag a choice. Either you accept the Torah, or I'll drop the mountain on top of you, and Shom Teheik Furaskam, your death, your burial place is going to be right here. Tos already is bothered by the question, what does it mean, Shom Teh Kuraskam? You're going to go ahead and die if you ex- don't accept the Torah? You're accepting the Torah under duress? After all, Kal Yisrael indeed said, Na'asev Anishma, they already accepted the Torah. So what does this mean, that if you don't accept the Torah, the mountain's going to fall on your head, Shom Teh Kuraskam? What exactly is the idea that the Gemara Masech Shabbos, that Peches, is expressing? What does it mean, Shom Teh Kuraskam? They already accepted the Torah, Na'asev Anishma, in what sense? Is the Torah being accepted now under duress? So if you take a look at the Kuzari, the Kuzari very famously quotes the philosophers that point out that there are matter in the world can be divided into a number of different categories. You have what's called domain, inanimate objects, stones, chairs, tables, and the like. Then you have tzomech. Tzomech is plant life. It is alive, but it does not move. Then you have chaya, animal, the animal kingdom, which already is alive and moves. Then you have medaber, Human beings, they have the capacity of speech, that would, that's what distinguishes them from the animal kingdom. And then finally, a fifth category, you have the category known as Yisrael, or Yehudi, which is even above the level of Medaber. When you go ahead and analyze these different categories, they're not merely quantitatively different. That a Tzomeach is domain plus, that a Chaya is Tzomeach plus, but there's a qualitative difference in every category. Indeed, you're jumping up to a totally different level of, of matter, of, of being, of entity. For example, if you take Tzomech and Tzomech dies, if you take a plant and it dies, it does not now become a domain. It does not become like a stone. The nature of something that was alive at Tzomech and now it dies, it starts to wither away. It's not domain. It's withering away. Domain, because it does not have that capacity within it of life, so it lasts for a very, very long time. It can last for almost forever. So may have, once it dies, it disappears. Chaya, when it comes to a Chaya, so it's not merely if you take away its life, it doesn't revert now to become Tzomeach. It disappears. It's dead. It's a fundamentally different category. Medaber. Again, when Medaber loses its Koach of Dibur, it's still qualitatively different than a Chaya. It's not a Chaya plus Dibur. It's fundamentally different. The human is fundamentally different than a Chaya. And perhaps one could suggest that when it comes to Yehudi, Yisrael. So what distinguishes Yisrael from Medaber? So the fundamental distinction between Yisrael and Medaber is that Hashem accepted, took Klal Yisrael as his Am, as the Am Segula, as the Am Hanivchar. What defines us as Am Hanivchar? Asher bochar banu mikol ha'amim v'nosan lano es Toroso. It's our relationship to Torah which defines us as Am Hanivchar. And perhaps one could suggest is that if you take away Torah from B'nai Yisrael, if you take away Torah from Yehudi, it's not the Pshad that he just becomes Medaber, but he loses his very Mahus, he loses his very purpose for existence. Indeed, a Yehudi without Torah is Kamisha Eno, is dead, is not really living. It's not just, okay, now he drops to the level of Medaber. He doesn't exist. His entire Chayus, his entire existence is 100% gone. Perhaps that's exactly the pshat in the Gemara, in Masech Shabbos, that peches, that if you don't accept the Torah, shom teheik furaschem. Indeed, they accepted the Torah, Nasa v'nishma. It was accepted by Klal Yisrael. They had the option, and Nasa v'nishma. However, what Hashem wants to express, and what the Gemara expresses, is that a Jew who at some point abandons Torah, he leaves Torah, so shom teheik furaschem. He's no longer, he loses that maila of Yisrael, and it's not the pshat, he just becomes a medaber, he's dead. For a Jew, his relationship to Torah, his relationship to Talmud Torah, to that Dvar Hashem, is his very existence, is his chayus. And if he loses that chayus, if he severs that relationship, if he does not live a life of Torah and accept the Torah in that fashion, indeed, kof aleim har and shom tehik furaschem. We're learning the Gemara in Yeshiva, Masech is Makos, the second paragraph. Yud tells us that if you have a Talmud who kills Beshogek, 
a Talmud that should ratzak b'shoge. He runs to Im Mikla, and the Gemara tells us that Rabbo, his Rebbe, is Gola Imo, also has to go to Mikla. Why should that be? What's the reason? And the Gemara tells us that a person in Im Mikla is Vechai, he's supposed to live. And therefore, we have to supply him with all of his sources of, of life, of existence. So for a Jew, part of his existence, a fundamental part of his existence is the Torah Hashem. And therefore, we have to give him a normal existence, a normal life. And that means his Kesher to Torah. And a person cannot learn from just anyone. Therefore, his Rebbe has to be Gola with him. As we daven in Marv every single night, Ki heim chayenu ve'orech yamenu. Torah is our existence, is our life without it. Shum tehei kfuraschem. Perhaps this is the pshat in a very famous Tosas in Maseches Brachos Dafir Aleph. Tosas tells us why is it when it comes to Birchas HaTorah. So when we go ahead and we study Torah, now we take a break, we go to work, we go to school, we eat. We don't then when we come back make a new Birchas HaTorah in country as for example to Mitzvah Sukkah. When it comes to Sukkah, you eat, you leave the Sukkah, you go to work, you go to school, what have you, then you come back to the sukkah, a new bracha is required. When you re-enter the sukkah, new bracha, why is it that when it comes to Torah learning, when you left and you come back, you don't recite a new bracha? So Tos is mechadesh, that because when it comes to Torah, you never have a hesachadas. You never really leave Torah. And even when you went to work, and when you went to school, when you ate, there's no real hesachadas from Torah. What exactly is the idea? What's Tos is expressing? So perhaps we can suggest the idea is that, again, Torah is really part of the fabric of our existence. And even when we go to work, so we go to work, but we have, we're living with halacha, we're living with Torah in the workplace, in our meal times, in our schooling, when we take a walk, when we take a look, we see a sunset, we start thinking about shkia sachama and the dinim that are triggered by shkia. Nightfall, we see stars, tzaysa kochav, we see a body of water, we start to think about hilchos mikvaos, and all the Torah and all the halacha that permeates that. That's how a Torah Jew lives. Torah is his life, it's everything about it. That's indeed a beautiful Gemara Maseches, Bava Metziah that Pedal describes, that when Reish Lakish died, so his Rebbe and his Chavrusa, Rabbi Yochan, was totally distraught. He lost his Chavrusa, he lost Reish Lakish, and he couldn't, uh, he couldn't function. He was Bitsar Gado. The Gemara says, the Chachamim brought him Rav Lazar ben Pedas, who was the biggest Bucky, the biggest Bucky. They said, maybe this could be your Chavrusa. So Rav Yochanan started learning Rav Lazar ben Pedas, said over a Chiddush, and Rav Lazar ben Pedas brought him ten Rayas, ten proofs to his Chiddush. And Rav Yochanan says, you think you're doing me a favor? You're helping me? I also could have brought that Rayas. You're no Bar Lakisha. You're not like my Talmud Chavusa Reish Lakish. When I said a Chiddush in front of Reish Lakish, he didn't bring me 10 Rayas. Anyone could bring Rayas. He asked me 24 Kashas. Now I had to go ahead and answer those 24 Kashas back and forth. The Rizcha de Oraisa. That was my existence. And that sharpened the Torah. That gave me my Chayus. I don't need Rayas. I need someone to attack, to fight with me in my learning. That's how Torah becomes created. That's how we create Torah. That's how we develop Torah. Rav Elzer ben Pedas did not satisfy the need of Rav Yochanan, and he was without his Chavrusa, and indeed the Gemara describes Rav Yochanan goes delirious and passes away because he couldn't survive, he couldn't exist without that level of learning, without that connection to a true sense of the Torah that he had with Rish Lakish. Ki heim chayenu v'orech yomenu. We say, "Va'atem hadvekim ba'Hashem elokeichem, chayim kulchem hayom." How do we achieve, achieve that sense of "Atem hadvekim ba'Hashem"? The way we do so is we can't touch Torah, we can't cleave. I'm sorry, we can't touch Hashem, we can't cleave to Hashem. The way we do so is by studying the Dvar Hashem, the Torah Hashem, and by doing that, the Torah is for us an eitz chayim hila machazikim ba kiheim chayenu. That's how we achieve that sense of dveikus b'ashem, and that's how we achieve that goal. Atem ha'dveikim b'ashem lokechem chayim kulchem ayom. If a Jew, for a Jew to live, to be properly living, he has to have that kesher. The bon shalom, which happens through that kesher to Torah. And thus, as we approach Chag HaShavuos, we understand very well, indeed, without that deep kesher to Torah Hashem, shon take for askem. It's not the pshat that we're Okay, we're still, we're still medabit. No, 
we lose our existence, we lose our chayas, we lose our kihen chayenu baruch yameinu. As we approach the Chag HaShuos HaBo'alein Latova, we should be zoche to really understand this Yisod, and the Kabbal upon ourselves this Yisod, and the Kabbal upon ourselves growth, continued growth in Torah, and thereby continued life and continued vekus. Ta'ashem Yisbarach.